Hello everybody, Delahan here with another Dawn War 3 cast. Today we're looking at a match between Saya playing the Space Marines against uh, someone with some Korean characters in their name that I don't know how to pronounce. Playing Orcs. So, for now I'm just going to call them Orcs. And uh, we got uh, kind of an interesting loadout for Saya here. We got Diomedes as their early game elite, but then we got the Vendred and the uh, Imperial Knight Paladin. And I suspect that these two are chosen mainly for their command abilities. We have Assault Leap and the Shield Wall Devastator commands. So I'm expecting we are going to see... Okay, Barracks first. I was kind of expecting Doctrine Shuffle first. So th these are kind of at odds. we got both Doctrines for Devastators and Assault Marines, despite them coming from separate buildings. So we're going to the Barracks first. Probably going to see some Assault Marines early game and uh, Devastators in the mid game. And then uh, we do got a Listening Post coming up on this middle point here. And we're going to an early Elite Point Generator. This is kind of interesting. I really... I feel like... A lot of people, especially high-level players, weren't really taking advantage of elite point generators. I, I personally was, but I, I'm not quite the top-level player that <clears throat> other people are. People are better than me. So, it's interesting seeing this. I'm actually really excited to see how this goes. We got a rec gen coming up as well, and for the orcs, we just got kind of a standard boys' hut, wog tower kind of thing. Uh, shooters, probably gonna see. We got tons of bombs and healing scrap and knobs. So we're gonna see lots of shooters uh, with, with bombs and probably knobs and. Etc. I don't think that's going to be anything not standard, so I'm mainly interested in watching what Saya does here. We got early power, which is kind of interesting. Probably going to see a bit of a tech rush. No upgrades. Uh, orcs do have the cheapest uh, pile of guns. It's way cheaper than Soul Shrine or Armory, so that's one of the things about playing Orcs is you can get upgrades a little bit cheaper than everybody else. Uh, so far, map control is like firmly in favor of Saya right now. Captured all these points. Orc is just playing a little defensively. This Servitor is just scouting out. We've got two boy squads and a shooter squad. Probably going to get the scrap on the shooters and then push out with a log push. Um, from Saya, we, we just have one Assault Marine and one Cyber Scout queued up here. So that's kind of a small force. This is a bigger army here for sure, especially with log, very imposing. But we do have these Servitors just kind of scouting out. I don't like that um, Saya is kind of wasting these Servitors to scout this out. You can use the, uh, so you can throw the server Skull on the units and get some vision that way. I don't think it's worth suiciding them that much. But uh, he is going to get the vision here and try and snipe this power jet. That's kind of an interesting play here. That's a good harass because there's not much uh, that uh, Korean orc guy can do about it because uh, he can't. He doesn't have the knockdown. He did put the scrap on the boys instead of the shooters. I find that it's a bit of an odd choice, but not a terrible one. And I would have liked to see a log push by now. Maybe he's waiting for a few more units. So this is kind of some good harassment. Catching this boy squad out is really good. These assault marines are going to definitely beat this boy squad. No problem at all. They probably won't even lose more than one model here. So, this is a good engagement. We are seeing the shoot does come to support, but uh, that's the thing about assault marines in this kind of situation. If orcs aren't setting the tempo of the match with log and do being the aggressive one, uh, they're, they're very weak defensively and they're going to lose out those kind of trades. We got a second rec gen coming up here. No generators up on the top or bottom yet. No one power gen coming up over here. And we do have two squads of cyber scouts. This is a very attrition harassment focused army from Saya. Probably just buying time to try and get some elites out. We're going to see. I'm curious to see if uh, they're going to go for early Diomedes or if they're going to uh, save them up and maybe go for a Vendred earlier. If you get a 15 minute Vendred, that's, that's pretty powerful. Actually faster than 15 minutes because Roughly one elite point is around two minutes, but you got the elite point generator like that. I think it goes down to about 60, 70, 70, 80 seconds or something, about a minute and a half. Uh, it does change with the escalation phase. Good uh, picking off that uh, that thing. We do got the Cypress Scouts also have a hidden doctrine. We do have the first wad coming off here. So we're going to see a push from a uh, Korean orc guy. Uh, well, we don't have any upgrades on the shooter, so I'll both the scraps go to the boys. That's kind of an odd choice to me. I would always put on the shooters first, I feel like that's more impactful, but uh, this should be fine. These scouts are being a little brave, they're trying to sight the tower, they might actually pull it off here, but nope, pull it out here. Good thing they got that cloak. Um, yeah, so I'm saying something about elite points, yeah, so he can have the Vendred out at, you know, 12 minutes or so, if he just goes straight to the Vendred. It's gonna be tricky, but not impossible. We've got a Rec Gen coming up here, listening post here, this push is gonna go on this listening post, it's gonna need to be defended, I think, but, uh... He does have some time here to defend that. It is an improved listening post, and it is, uh, boys are pretty inefficient at it. That came in the listening post. He's not really defending it, though, so I think, uh, the elite point generator is going to go down, but he's gotten probably one free elite point out of it, so he's got, what, two elite points, almost three elite points for Saya, and just two and another minute or so for the third one. So he saved about a minute on those elite points. I don't know if that's necessarily the best benefit. I feel like he should have committed more to defending it, but that's fine. 
I would like to see, uh, oh, we do got power up coming over here, so we're going to see this point be kind of crucial. Uh, Orc not investing heavily in this point. We're going to see Diomedes coming in here. So going for Diomedes first and probably Avenger it, so that's not a bad choice. I would like to see that elite point generator get reclaimed. What else is like to see both players invest in upgrades, especially Orcs. Um, getting those early infantry upgrades is really powerful, especially if you get like damage. Damage one with these sniper scouts, it's a huge buff. We've got the standard coming down. We're gonna see this push on the uh, boys. I'm probably gonna snipe this Wog Tower. It is getting repaired, and we do start to have some uh, no no scrap on the shooters yet. You can pick it up here. We got a second Wog Tower. This one's gonna go down here though, even though it's getting repaired. The Armadi is just tanking shields off the boys out here. So this is gonna be an interesting engagement. These assault marines are getting killed by jumping in. They tried to jump on the tower. I feel like that was a mistake. I feel like uh, at this point. Space Marines just pulls out with the damage done here and uh, moves on. Orcs used the second log and it's going to be ineffectual because they're not going to be able to really catch up. That's everything about getting the uh, the pile of guns early as Orcs is I believe they changed the log upgrade to be more significant. So perhaps that is worth pursuing. I haven't played Orcs yet since uh, the changes. I've been trying to play today but the matchmaking times have been pretty visible. Diabetes is getting a little overzealous here. Although, I feel like this army does not need to be running away at all. I don't know why. Um, that that could have been a easy... Uh, at least making the, the Rosarius trigger on Diomedes. But probably just wanted to avoid losing any units. Economically speaking, Orc is starting to claw their way back in here. They have less generators, but securing this top and the bottom point, and actually building up on this bottom point, and securing this middle point. So, Saya has more generators, but it's all here and a little bit here. Orc does need to get some generators out, economically speaking. Not doing so amazing right now. Building a lot of walk towers. Probably going for the knobs rush at this point. Third walk tower coming up right here. Uh, this is kind of a play style that I'm not a huge fan of. It's just uh, getting knobs as early as possible. They're great units, but uh, I like getting more upgrades and just doing more aggressive play early on and trying to get some shield gens. We've got the weird boy coming out. You can see a full minute later than Diomedes. And we do have a listening post. Two listening posts up for orcs. That's a big investment. That could have been... Uh, more units or more generators or something. So, okay, that one's getting cancelled. That's good. Um, I feel like that's a mistake at this point. Saya is kind of just economizing much better here. Doing a lot more of less. So, I feel like uh, Saya is in an advantageous position here. Just got more of an attrition army. Orcs, as orcs, you really, really. Also, building all the walk towers clustered up like this uh, does make it more difficult to attack down here, for example, or even up here. Because uh, the log bonus is only going to be probably about here, and you have to run that distance. And if you don't get that longer log upgrade, or whatever it's called now, you know, you're going to use most of your buff before you even get to where you want to hit. So I'm always a big fan of spreading those out more. Uh, just, this attrition damage is going to reach a critical mass, especially I would like to see an armor get some damage buff on this. Oh, but that, uh, that was a really, that was almost a really bad moment there. Still, you can see how this is a problem that s s snipers have always kind of had, is they're just so fragile that uh, if, if you didn't have this doctrine to make them cloak, this is really tough to make them work well. We do have a wad coming up here, so we're going to see a big push. Maybe a teleport? No, he just used a teleport. I always like to see a teleport used now that it's no longer just a nuke. People kind of forgot it existed after it stopped insta kill and stuff. But it's still really good for this. This actually does help mitigate that issue I was talking about with the log towers being so clustered. Is he could activate the log and then teleport in, rate right as log finishes, and then get right into the middle of it. But we have a listening post up here, so this listening post is going to this generator going to take it out just by Diomedes. So again, not a great investment from uh, the orc player. I feel like he needs to invest in the safer points first. But the the disadvantage of building those generators is that scouts are really good against listening posts and generators, and. It's, He's been very timid with he's using these wogs unsuccessfully. He's overestimating his opponent's army, I think, at this point. I think if you really want to counter these these trucks, you uh, you get a war truck and you jump on them. I feel like that's the way to go here. And uh, we are seeing is this point upgraded? This point's not upgraded, this point's not upgraded. We can see this getting upgraded. We can see Sai going tier two pretty soon here, if not already tier two. And we're just gonna see the the economy getting whittled away at the orc economy, and orc is not really making good investment decisions to counter this, in my opinion. We're seeing Diomedes be a little bit exposed down here. He might actually have a hard, hard time escaping from this between all the stuns from the boys and any potential knockdown or fist of gork or whatever. But I think he might just barely get away here. Uh, these boys are actually gonna take a ton of damage. 
We're putting the shield on the boys with the. Uh, we're probably gonna see Stormblades coming in. Stormblades are, are coming in. Diomedes is probably gonna die here. But, uh. So this is kind of a waste of Diomedes. I feel like he could have just kept running and gotten away, but Diomedes doesn't go down. Stormblades are up here. These scouts are just whittling away at this uh, boys' hut. I don't know, I feel like Orc needs to get aggressive here and try and, uh, try and kill a shield generator. It's gonna be, the, the benefit of size strategy is it's very, uh, very annoying to deal with, but the best way to deal with this kind of strategy where they're playing like a kiting uh, harassment strategy is just go attack them. Go kill them, basically. And we do have the armory coming up here. No tier 2 yet, so the armory is coming up, we'll probably gonna see some damage upgrades soon from Saya Orc is probably just saving up for knobs at this point. We should just activate Wog and try and push in with these units. We do have the Stormblades jump in. Stormblades are a pretty okay choice against the Cyber Scouts, but an expensive one. And I don't know how effective this is going to be. The Elites are just jumping in there, using their abilities, but not really using them to great effect. You might get one Cyber Scout squad here, and that would be good. But, uh, it's not, it's not quite enough. Oh, he almost got it. I think he, uh, he just barely escaped. So that's kind of a bad situation to be in. We do have the Leapo Generator up, going up for Saya again. That's good. I like to see that. Uh, presumably, we're going to see the Vendred pretty early. Vendred's extremely powerful against anything, really. But, like, man, the Vendred is dope. So if we see that in, uh, you know, the next five minutes, that would be awesome. Even less than five minutes, actually, at this point. So we're going to see some damage upgrade. Yep, yeah, damage upgrade coming up. It's a bit later than I would have liked it. I feel like... Uh, Maybe a bit hesitant there. If you got that as soon as possible, I feel like that'd be the, obviously the most effective way to do it. So I feel like uh, Sai is not quite sure what she what they wanted to do, but uh, I do I do really like that choice. No, uh, we do got the power guns up for Orc guy, and he is getting the longer lug. So yeah, that buffs the duration and damage and speed bonuses. So yeah, that's definitely a worthwhile upgrade for sure. I would actually be I'm probably gonna work that into my build where I get that instead of the third log tower and just do that kind of pressure. But we're gonna see a big log push here. Maybe we're going to see a teleport to get the army in, just jump the army in on this or something, do some eco damage. Uh, Saiya's army is on the wrong side of the map here. We do have this point taken again by the orcs, and we are seeing this elite point generator, unfortunately, being picked off before it really pays for itself. But uh, actually, it's not entirely true, because the way the elite point generator works is it just instantly reduces the current timer for the elite points, like a flat amount. So if you get an elite point, like Saiya just got the elite point, and then the timer resets, it's paid for itself, in my opinion, because you got the elite point earlier. But, uh, depends on where it is on the timer. So we are saying this orc push, you see it that without longer log, the log bonus is already gone. But that's not going to stop this. All this economy is going on two power gens, the listening post, and the barracks. So we're going to have to see that barracks replaced, or uh, maybe a doctrine travel. We are saying the barracks replaced in the base. This point is upgraded twice now, I think. So, there's a lot of money coming in for Sai here. Probably should be going tier 2. Oh, it is tier 2, maybe. Uh, already tier 2. Got the upgrades. Okay, we're gonna see a Death Scrum pod coming in. And, uh, we'll see what else. I would like to see maybe a Whirlwind. Whirlwind's always really tough to deal with as orcs. And especially this kind of orc economy that, uh, doesn't really have a lot of money. I feel like, economically speaking, Sai is just incredibly far ahead. You just saw, oh, the scouts just got jibbed. I think there's just one scout? No, that was all the sniper scouts are down. So it's just. Literally, one assault marine is all that stands between uh, Saya and Death, but this orc army is just playing so timid. I mean, we could just constantly doing wog pushes. There should be another wog going off here. Just keep pushing it and try and deal some damage. I feel like uh, the orc guy is playing extremely timid and ineffectual and kind of letting Saya economize and get to those higher tier units that are going to be really tough to deal with now. But yeah, that's the thing about sniper scouts is uh, they're so squishy and if you don't split them at the right moment, they're just dead, and not much you can do about it. Same with rangers. That's why I feel like people are saying that snipers are overpowered, and I think they're forgetting how fragile these units are. I mean, 985 HP is not a lot. Servitors have 400, right? That's like two servitors for health. It's not a lot compared to like assault marines that are like 2100. Servitors are actually pretty tanky, though, all things considered. Yeah, uh, work is just kind of idle in a lot of units, way too much. I feel like there needs to be more, more scrap. it has got scrap on most of these units. These have knobs now. Uh, you just need some tank busters at this point. I would say more upgrades, probably. He got longer walk, he's not getting the damage and health upgrades. I feel like those are important, especially health. Health goes a long way as works. 
especially against this kind of attrition playstyle. So we do got two more sniper scouts on the field for Saya. And we do got no three sniper scouts, and we got the death storm drop pod almost done. So I feel like that death storm is gonna prove to be quite disastrous for these orc units. Uh, knobs will make short work of it, but without the knobs, uh, death storm. I guess a uh, fisted orc also works against death storm, but I feel like a, a good death storm is gonna be really disastrous. And uh, we could see one thing you could do from the scrap here is you can use guardians to build like a forward watchtower or a tower. We got. Uh, a fifth <laughs> log tower up for orcs, so he doesn't even have any need of building it for free, but he could. It's a lot cheaper if you build it from scrap like that. So we could see rocks at some point? I don't know, this is kind of a weird game because I feel like uh, both players have been playing relatively passive. Saya deliberately less so for uh, the orcs. So we got that, that death storm. It's kind of a waste, honestly. It's it's gonna defend this, although it, really he could just kill it outright with the weird boy and the knobs, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I think the orc player is just playing extremely timid, and he's about to get hit in the face of a bunch of dreadnoughts and whirlwinds and all that fun goodness. Lots of upgrades. We got damage two and health one already on the space rings. So I feel like orc is just misplaying this. I feel like they could win outright almost. Like it's one of those situations. You see this happen a lot if you actually watch a lot of replays, even from good players. People are really bad at estimating when they are in a good position. I mean. Part of that is scouting. I feel like Orc player just feels heavily pressured. They feel like they're pinned in, they can't expand, but in terms of actual army, they are way eclipsing anything that uh, Saya can muster at this point. And the main reason is just, uh, like, they're overestimating, and we're reaching a point where in about two minutes, Saya is going to have the Vendred, and once that Vendred is out, Orc is in a really bad position, because there's simply not enough anti-vehicle, and even if there was, the Vendred is just so effective at just killing squads. So it's very tough to engage it with this kind of army. And the uh, the last orc elite is just Gorguts, and like he doesn't have a ton of heavy hitting mid to late game elites. So the longer this game goes on, the harder it's going to be for orc to win, and he's not taking advantage of the early game. So we got four sniper scouts on the field, a fifth one being built. So we're saying just spam scouts, and this really shouldn't be as effective as this. All he needs is a war truck, drop the units on it, bam. Weird Boy's already shown himself to be extremely effective against this. And I think it's just uh, mismanagement on the part of Mr. Orc guy. We have still no more upgrades. Oh, we did get infantry damage one. Okay. And we do have a mech shop coming up. And mech shop, not the most useful choice, honestly. Like, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Orc mech. Um, just because it's pretty expensive until you start getting that late game, uh, the scrap piles and, like, discounts and all that stuff. But uh, I think that does help him in some respects, as he can take full advantage of uh, some of his uh, abilities from tacking up so fast. So we're going to see uh, Diamonds get caught out here. But again, Wog is almost worn off at this point. Just because those towers are so far away from where he wants to attack. And we're going to see probably a ne Never Death Storm drop out in here. Yeah, Never Death Storm drop out behind all these units and they need to just focus fire this. This is kind of interesting. You can teleport out with the Weird Boy. I kind of like that. But uh, he, again, he could just kill this outright. Probably needs to mix some tank questers in there or something. We're saying the map kind of slowly get crawled back. We've got a Doctor Chapel up here, but it's kind of under attack from these boys. So we'll see. We are gonna see a Wog go off over here, and we're gonna see Gorgats coming here, but Saya is almost ready to call in the Vendred. This is gonna be a really tough push at this point. There's not enough tank busters, not enough anti-vehicle. There's just a lot of squishy infantry that aren't upgraded. I feel like the the window for this kind of push is long past. And I think we, we can see, maybe uh, Saya will skip the Vendred for a really early Paladin. I would personally, I would, I would say the Vendred is the way to go at this point. It's really good against blobs and it just does massive, massive damage per shot. But we'll see. Uh, shield gen going down over here from these assault rains. So that's the disadvantage of clustering like this, all these walk towers, is all your presence on this top part of the map, it's not spread out very well. we got some tank presses finally coming up, Daka Hut coming up, putting out these cybers. We've got another walk tower for some reason, that was unnecessary. Maybe that was a cheap one, I don't know, but. Uh, he already had enough for tech, so the only reason to build more is to build it somewhere useful, and just building another one in your cluster of log towers is not what I would call useful. So we are going to see uh, a Vendred coming in, and I feel like that's going to just completely seal this game in favor of Saya. Um, the Orc army is not diversified enough, it's just all too low, too late kind of playstyle, so I, I feel they're going to run straight into this Vendred and just die. Uh, Saya's playing pretty cautiously though, it's like floating a lot of power, um, 
So, I can't tell. Maybe there's a Dreadnought in the drop pads. I can't see them, unfortunately. That's one of the annoying bugs with the replay viewer. Hopefully, that gets fixed sometime next this year. But, you know, we'll see. I don't know how much interest there is from Relic to really support this game going forward, unfortunately. But, uh, I think they should. I don't see any reason not to. We're going to see Avenger get a really nice hit off here, I think. You can see how much damage that did. That's just a basic attack, and it just basically wiped out two squads that were clustered up with plus, let alone pushing the uh, Q. So we're going to see uh, Warboss getting shot. Again, doing like 300 damage per shot on the Avenger. It just doesn't... They buffed the damage on it, and I really don't know why, because it, it really didn't need the damage buff. Summary's just being annoying over here. These sniper scouts are just going to bleed everything over here. The taunt kind of misused there. Gorguts is doing his spinning claw, and he does have uh, scraps, so that is going to heal these units when it uh, completes. Assuming it doesn't get knocked down, he does get knocked down, so that was kind of a blunder there. We we're going to see Vendred. I think he hit a squad or two there. He just gibbed it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to see the Orc Army just get torn apart by this Vendred at this point. And I feel, feel like this is the point where the game is pretty much over. Saya has way too much money. And uh, this is just it for an Orc guy. There's nothing he can really do to come back here. Um, well, I shouldn't say. There's, there's stuff he can do, but he has to play extremely well. And so far, he's just losing stuff. Uh, not enough tank busters and not enough counter to sniper scouts. He's just relying on the weird boy to deal with it. But this is kind of the Orc play style that I really don't like. I see a lot of people play like this, and I find it to be kind of mediocre. Um, this is kind of like the basic bitch of work play style. It's not impressive and it's not that effective when someone knows how to uh, deal with it. So we're gonna see the orcs potentially attack here. We do have the healing wad from Gorgas. That's pretty useful. We got a big trap. That's uh, an okay choice. It's not, it is a decent counter to this. The mines and the bombardment, and also the basic gun is pretty damn good, especially if he gets there and shoots that Avenger. Gorgas is doing an okay job of tying it up in melee, which is good. But uh, <laughs> it's too little too late. Vendred just does massive AoE. Uh, we're going to see Gorguts go down. We're going to see all these units go down. And the looted track is AFK over here, unfortunately. So I feel like Orcs is kind of falling apart. But again, this is not even halfway through the game. So I don't know why this game keeps going. This, this should be it. This, this should be the end. Uh, the Orc player should just uh, lose this shield and lose the turret and be done. We've got Death Copters of all things coming out. And that's not that's going to help the Sniper Scouts, admittedly. I shouldn't say it's not useless. And we might see we might see the Avenger go down to this looted uh, the big the big track if he doesn't focus fire. He's shooting the Death Copters instead. We're gonna see it blow up the Oh he's, he needs to get out of here while the Rosarius is active and tie up these tank busters with dummies. He could actually get out of here just fine. That's a fin that's ever fin about these uh, Death Copters against this Avenger. Is it just two shots him? Three shots him. Yeah, we're gonna see the Avenger get away, no problem. There's no contest at all. And at this point, Orc has one tank booster, and that's it. So this game should be over, so I should just attack move and win. Uh, the fact that this doesn't happen is disturbing, but this is one of those things to talk about. Like, I don't think Sai really knows how far ahead they are, and how easily they can just win this game in five seconds. But uh, you see that a lot. We are seeing... I think this is Escalation Phase 3. We are seeing these, these guys being built from the scrap files, so... There's enough scrap here to just build a ton of Deathcopters, and maybe it'll, that'll keep them in the game. They'll get some kills on these scouts in the song or something. I don't know. Uh, Vendred's probably healing back at base. Vendred's gonna be back in the fight. We've got double healing here. This is, this is one of the things. You wanna build a uh, production structure near your HQ to get extra healing. That's always a good idea. We're gonna see a lot of buzz saws. I don't know. We're gonna see some spots get picked off by these Deathcopter mobs. This is kinda cool to see, honestly. I do like this. Um, I don't I just don't think it's enough to get back in the game, but I do like this a lot. This kind of playstyle of just doing this crazy harassment with these pretty cheap Deathcopters. And once you get a critical mass of them like this, they can just do a ton of damage. But you can see the Vendrad is just going to chase them all down. So this is kind of interesting. Maybe, maybe Orc does stay in this game through some cool harassment play like that. Um, the Space Marine army is still incredibly fragile. He really just size coasting on stuff. He should have way more units. We've got Laz Cannons coming, so that's going to be a bit of a counter to all this. We'll probably see Diamonds get picked off by these Death Covers. That's the thing. You can't just keep using your hero solo like this against mobile Death Covers. We're seeing... Uh, Dreadnought being dropped in, but uh, again, we're gonna see Dominus go down, and yeah, I do like this. This is a pretty cool style, seeing his mass death cop just being used like this. That might keep him in the game, I don't know. Too little, too late kind of thing, I think. But uh, we're gonna see him go for the buzzsaw. That's never the right move. He's gonna lose a ton of death cop is there. He lost almost all his death cop is for no reason. The buzzsaw is just not effective. We're seeing this. <laughs> We're seeing a Deathstorm drop pod being dropped just to clear up these uh, generators, which is 
a complete waste of money, but when you're at that kind of position the size and you can afford that, I guess. So, uh, we do got two a Dreadnought and a Red Dreadnought. I feel like... Yeah, this should still be over. I feel like Sai is playing extremely passively. And, uh, I don't know. We get, maybe we'll see this Death Cup just slowly pick off units and just bleed money. There's a good position on that, that last cannon there. We might see this shield gen go down. I don't know. I don't think, I don't think there's enough damage here. Oh, Bomb Squigs might actually get it here. Bomb Squigs did do a ton of damage to it. Bomb Squigs are also a really good counter to Sniper Scouts, by the way, because it's really hard to right-click on those Bomb Squigs with the Snipers. And, uh, they do, like, two-shot Scout Squats. That's another counter that you can employ. Kind of unintuitive, maybe, but it's actually a really solid counter to snipers. There's a lot of counter to snipers. I feel like people are just uh, neglecting the proper counters in a lot of ways. Hmm. Well, do we have more? Well, you got a second pile of guns. I always like this strategy to get upgrades faster. I would like to see more uh, infantry upgrades, perhaps. This is, uh. I don't know about that. Yeah, stop you doing that. Stop. Uh, they're much better just attacking normally with their guns against the sniper scouts. Losing all these death cop just for no reason. Not good, not good at all. Uh, the shield gens, you need to start killing some shield gens with these orc units, I bet. We've got a second dreadnought coming in here. And uh, not nearly enough anti vehicle for orc player. Losing all these death cop just again. Maybe mix some killer cans in here or uh, something. Knobs are not good against dreadnoughts, so I wouldn't go for that. Maybe a big track? Or Death Tread. Death Treads don't do very good against Dreadnoughts. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like, uh, just needs more anti-vehicle. I do like that he is getting his Death Covers. I think he just needs to keep him alive better. Crazy, uh, <laughs> income here. Uh, we're reaching that point, too, where, uh, the Paladin is only a few minutes away here. Probably about four or five minutes. So, uh, if Orc doesn't make something happen here, that's gonna be it. Ventred might go down here? I don't know. I don't think he has enough to really do that. And yeah, he's just wasting his death copters again. What I would consider trying is throwing the claw at the scouts and trying to grab them in some sort of AoE. If you're going to do the, the buzz claw thing, try and combo it with that, perhaps. That's the way to go. He needs to cancel these generators in this sort of situation here, not just waste the money on it. And he's using walk here. Army's going in. But they're so clustered up. We do got uh, standard tier three out for space runes, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, tier three is out. So we're gonna see some predators soon. Another dreadnought coming in. That's a third dreadnought. There's a fourth one being built here. So uh, there's a lot of dreadnoughts, and this could be really hard to counter this kind of this kind of late game space run force. Although I feel like this game should be over already. Uh, we're seeing Diamonds just go in and get mauled. He might just barely escape here. But Gorgas, I think, is gonna die for it. The, Fist of Gore kind of being used, hitting the Sniper Scouts, which is good. But you got a Dreadnought going down, we got another Dreadnought probably going to go down here. Avenger has pretty low health as well. Uh, you can't underestimate Bomb Squigs and Tank Buzzers in this sort of situation at all. Paladin's going to come in on the field now. Coming in somewhere, I don't know. So we got to see another Dreadnought go down. we got this Shield Gen going down, so that's a big boon economically. I don't like this Knob Squad, I don't think Knobs are effective at all against anything Space Marines is doing, except for the Sniper Scouts. You got a Stormbite is killing the Shield Gen over here, that's pretty good. We do have another Dreadnought going down. So uh, we do have the Paladin out and the Venture. Venture is pretty low HP. This Shield Gen is going to go down. Uh, this is actually kind of interesting. I think Orc is managing to stay in this game. I feel like is not pressing the advantage enough. Going too heavy on Dreadnought, seeing more Whirlwinds or something. Like, more, more stuff would be good. A uh, bit of a low in the action. We do have got full damage upgrades for Space Marines. We are seeing lots of vehicle upgrades works despite almost no vehicle investment beyond the Deathcopters. It's questionable. Lots of Hue and Wild going off here. It's nice to see. We got a, a looted track, a big track being built. I keep calling them looted tanks because it's War 2. Big track being built coming out. This Paladin is going to start shredding this Orc army with his uh, AoE. Might actually start picking off some of these Wild Towers. So the big track. Uh, if you're going to use a big track, you need to use it in kill and farm mode. I feel like that's the best way. That's a really good counter to Sniper Scouts because it's just going to continually knock them down. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of a uh, Orc is using Wog to heal up and stuff here. He might actually push in soon. He's got a lot of scrap pots. He can build a lot of vehicles. So Orc is reaching that crazy late game economy where they can... Uh, Orc late game is one of the strongest in the games because of this. It can just build so much stuff. And he's, he's doing a decent job of replacing these generators, at least. Like, it's not a terrible spot. 
like he's not doing great money wise. Sai is doing 600 power or better than him, which that's why I think Sai should be getting these upgrades a bit more. We do have the opportunity for an orbital and a rocks, I believe, at this point. Uh, Orc is going to be floating elite points. Yeah, Orc is floating elite points like mad because, again, uh, buy all these cheap elite points. Oh, wow, the Vendrag just got nuked, and Paladin's in a bad spot, too. We might actually start seeing that Sai has, like, a small little tiny army is going to be finding himself in a bad spot here. So you've got a uh, Dreadnought dropping in in the back on all his tank busters, doing some great AoE damage, but uh, it's going to go down here. No problemo, but Paladin might just escape here. Oh boy, we got the game closing for some reason. Alright, back in the game. Alright, yeah, I think this Paladin's in a bad spot, actually. He's, he's getting a little cocky, not building enough units. There's too many sniper scouts. I don't know. Uh, what they can see, uh... <laughs> Sai built more stuff, he's got lots of money. Somehow, somehow, or... Okay, going for the turret here, that's a good move, but... I don't know if he's gonna be able to kill it in time. I think he can. I think this turret is gonna go down. Give Sai lots more money. He has a good stun there on Gorguts. He might just barely get it. Oh, no, he actually managed to save that turret. That's pretty awesome. I, I'm thinking that uh, something needs to go and kill that, though. We got another Watch Tower coming up over here. That's just a waste of money. Uh, you don't need to build Watch Towers for full price when you can build them cheaper. But, uh, again, spending them out more is good. Maybe building some up here would be good from these scrap piles. Uh, it takes a medium scrap pile, I believe, to build one. Using the Death Copter for harassment is pretty good. I feel like... Okay, we got the Predator. I think he's going to go for this turret. He built a Never Walk He's building two Walk Towers up here. That's just a waste of money. A complete waste of money at this point in time. <laughs> this is Diomedes versus the Death Copter. It's kind of interesting. I think Diomedes is going to win that pretty handily. Uh, so power gen or somehow work is maintaining some map control. The salt rain's going to kill that turret. It's awesome. It's uh, a big a lot of money coming back to uh, Mr. Uh, Saya over here. We do got a few more upgrades. Tons of money, like a shit ton of money. I, I would like to see more units. I wish I could see the drop pods and the uh, those are set up. This I don't. I feel like he needs to just tech switch, right? Orc is building all this anti-vehicle. Oh, they does have a lot of everything, I guess. Like just get like a ton of devastators or something at this point. There's not really a ton to counter that. You know, there's there's something to be said for tech switching like that. Just get in like four or five Devastator Marines with suppression upgrade. This blob is just going to get... Boop, 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 boop. Land Speeder coming up to do harassment. Again, that's a terrible choice. Land Speeder just going to die instantly to everything. Killicans coming out. That's a good choice. Killicans are a nice, versatile uh, option. Destroying Scrap Piles, always good to see. That's going to make it a little harder to build more uh, free units and stuff. Not that he doesn't have an abundance of scrap over here, he's not using it. And this is a Dr. Chop coming up over here. Uh, yeah, I don't know, this is kind of a weird game. I feel like uh, Saya has all the advantages here, but Orc is somehow staying in it. I feel like uh, Saya is just kind of squandering a lot of the advantages he had. So when I called this game was over, it could have been over if Saya was just attack with. But at this point, she's given so much time for Orc to rebuild and attack and economize and build all these generators and have all this map presence set. I think Orc is going to reach a critical mass of economy as we get into this like late, super late game, and uh, Space Brain is not prepared to deal with it. We got uh, a 147 pop cap versus 158, so pretty similar pop cap wise. More more expensive units for Space Marines, and uh, we're going to see Vendred get a little too close here and just get mauled in melee. Yeah, it's not good for Mr. Vendred. Vendred being wasted. Gorguts is getting in the middle of all these vehicles. They're being immobilized by the Weird Boy. They're being damaged by Gorguts. The standard's being captured. The looted track being used to the tanks always triggers me really hard, but uh, it still does a lot of damage per shot. We are seeing uh, going for power port here with these uh, orbital and space rings. So I had to pull back these orcs and defend it. But uh, it is going to be defended, no problem, and didn't even have to shield the power port. But we're going to see all the production structures get destroyed here as well. So I think this is going to be the death blow. Sai is going to take out all the production, and that's going to make it really hard. Works. Also, all these wog towers going up. This wog tower needs to be destroyed while it's constructing, or it's channeling wog. It's not actually going to get destroyed. It's going to go off, and the wog does go off. Paladin is in a bad spot. Predator's in a bad spot. Yeah, this is a lot of uh, AoE buffs going on here. And Cyber Scouts, are, at this point in the game, are just proving themselves to be pretty useless. They're just shooting scrap instead of shooting units. Not a bad choice, because uh, Predator scrap can be used to build like a looted trap pretty easily. But, uh, yeah. Um, 
It looks bad for Oryx at this point, but I think it's actually coming into their favor. They're starting to get like a critical mass of these cost-effective units, while Space Marine keeps pumping out expensive unit after expensive unit after expensive unit. And floating tons of power, like just too much power needs more rectans. These should be rectans. These should be rectans. Like just keep building the rectans. These points are all upgraded, I think. But uh, it needs to deny the orc economy as much as possible. Just get tons. Too many sniper scouts, I mean. Like, they're not bad, but I would love to see some devastators. I think those would be more effective. We're seeing the orc forces are probably going to push out here. And I feel like they can they can take a, a shield down and turret. If orc goes on the offensive, it's going to be really bad for Saya. Because Saya is going to lose all these sniper scouts. Yeah, all these sniper scouts are going down here. The sniper scouts are long past their point of being useful. We see this economy harass. We're gonna see another attempt on the back door. Submarines are not enough to do this. Uh, that's the one thing about building. I don't agree with building all these watch towers, but it is starting to reach a point where they're generating lots of scrap to build more units. Predator's coming in. He's gonna try and nuke the power core. The cooldown was actually used. I missed that, I guess. So he could have almost actually won the game there. But a predator is a big investment to use for something like this, especially when it's going to die here. It might just barely escape. Yeah, Predator's just going to barely escape. I wonder if, if he's just going to try and... He's got to just try and send power core. I think that's the only way for Sai to win at this point. Uh, Orc has just reached this critical mass of economy. Although, not entirely uh, maximized as much as it could be. I think Orc is just spending his money more. Whereas Sai is floating a lot of money. Uh, we've got 1,000 wreck and 200 uh, power right now. This should be like three Devastator squads. Devastators would be a great tech switch to counter all these tank busters. And now power that's getting caught out by all these, uh, I don't know what the bomb squigs aren't all used, so we can see more bomb squigs here. But the power ultimately is just going to go down here. And yeah, the power is going to go down. We're going to see another desperate attempt to get the power core here. The cooldown has been used again, so he can't actually snipe it, and power core does get sniped by Space Marines. So side does take the game. That was kind of a weird game. I feel like it should have ended earlier, but then it went on, and I thought Orc could win. But ultimately, the back door does save the day for Saya. Thanks for watching. Bye.